Edward from Edward Woodcrafting. I'm presenting a series of videos describing how I want to supersize my new One Infinian Machinist CNC. This is part one titled Toolpath Tiling How to Mill Large Projects on a Smaller CNC. I'm going to use this flag project for this demo. Now the dimensions of the flag is 24 inches by 15 inches. And my goal for this project is to be able to cut on 24 by 24 inch boards. So I'm going to place the flag on a 24 by 24 inch project. Looking at the specifications from one infinity on the machinist, we see that the cutting area is only 16 and a quarter by 16 and a quarter inches. This is well short of our desire to cut a 24 by 24 inch board. One option I could do in this case is since the height of this particular flag is only 15 inches, I could rotate it 90 degrees and it would fit on the um, X axis, but it wouldn't fit on the Y axis still. So I do need to come up with a way of being able to machine fix on the machinist CNC. There is a method that will work, and that's called toolpath tiling. Now, I won't go through all the details how to do this. There's people like Vetric Software that has much better explanations than I could do, and I'll put a link down below and also on my website. But the basic idea is to take up, take a large project, such as our 24 inch a 24 inch board and break it up into smaller sections called tiles. And we machine each tile separately. And, and um, if everything's done right, you can produce and mill a big board on a smaller CNC, such as the machinists. So I, um, I created a a tile job on our flag project and I used 16 by 16 inch squares because that's the cutting area of the CNC and uh, I kind of labeled them one two three and four so we can identify each section now of course section one is the full 16 by 16 inch tile Section two is the first half of that 16 inch square. And uh, tile three area is the bottom half. And tile four is simply the lower right, lower left hand corner. To simulate what it will be like to machine this project, I'm drawing a square box in tile section one. It represents the cutting area of the CNC. And you set up the job um, like you do normally. You zero in the lower left-hand corner. And uh, you machine out the entire um, section, all the vector cuts, that you need to do. And then, um, then you need to slide your workpiece to the left exactly your 16 inches. So it really helps to have some kind of a indexing system like guide pins or stops. Um, and then you mill out 
your tile section too, completely. And like I said, it's really important to get the full 16 exact inches shifted. To mill tile section 3, you need to shift 16 inches both on the X and the Y, repeating the process. And finally, the last section 4, shift 16 inches to the left and machine out that section. And then you've completed your um, entire project. So there we have a way of machining a, a large project on a smaller machine. Um, it's been used by many people. It works as long as you can make sure that you have good alignment when you do your shifts. But there are a couple problems. The first is if we look at section four and we look at how much of the, the uh, board you're cutting is, doesn't sit on the, the uh, machining area. Majority of it is actually hanging out, so you need to support that. And um, that causes another problem where you need a lot of surface area and clearance to be able to move the board that much. You need 32 inches. The whole idea when I bought the machinist was I wanted to minimize my space. So um, that doesn't work out exactly right. And problem number two is... I didn't talk about it yet. I will on my next video. There's a uh, there's an issue where you cannot shift the board on the X beyond the 16 or I think it's 20 inches of clearance between the rails of the machine because they get in the way. Now, I've thought of a way of getting around that due to the nice features and the design of the machine. Um, but that's a consideration. And if you want to enclose the whole thing, having a, this 16 inch shift to the left and to the bottom eats up a lot of space. Also, the, uh, the larger you shift, uh, it's more susceptible to any kind of registration errors. The longer the shift, more likely you're going to have a problem. So you'd like to minimize that shift. Now, I've thought really hard and i come up with a twist on this timing method that I'll get into in my next video that uh, addresses some of these concerns. But I'll wrap it up for now. I thank you for listening through the whole thing. And I think this is going to be an interesting build. It may work. It may not work. We'll find out when we're done. This is Edward from Edward Crafting. And thank you again.